everybody, AJ Rising here. Today we're going to take a look at Lubuntu 14.10. Now, of the official Ubuntu versions, uh, Lubuntu is the lightest. It uses the LXDE desktop environment. And uh, in a lot of ways you get uh, what I would consider an old school desktop. Uh, if you've run a really any computer in the past oh, 15 years or so you're probably going to be pretty familiar with the setup you know, you got basic menu driven interface um, put icons on the desktop that sort of thing um, very simple easy to use uh, and like I said light on the resources now right here I've got up the Lubuntu uh, wiki page if you scroll down here to system requirements so we've done many tests and found that Lubuntu can be installed on a Pentium 2 or Celeron system with 128 megs of RAM but such a system would not perform well enough for daily use with 256 to 348 of RAM the performance will be better and system more usable and then if you got a half gig you don't need to worry about much and, and I can pretty much attest to that um, now right now of course I've got my browser open I've got the webcam running with uh, and currently viewing the webcam uh, I'm running my screen recorder I've got a few other things running in the background as I'm doing this uh, this video and looking over here at my task manager I am running 626 megs of RAM and using 6% of my CPU uh, granted, I do have a quad-core processor, so uh, you know there's quite a bit of CPU to you know that I've got available. But as you can see, you know all this stuff running, and you know I'm hardly using anything as far as my system resources. So I mean that is not so. Uh, kind of getting back to the whole system resources thing, you know. On one hand, they promote this distribution as if you've got older hardware, you can run it because of the system resources. But there's another side to that, in that even if you are using a modern system with plenty of RAM, plenty of CPU, um, you may be running uh, fairly uh, power-hungry applications and you, know, you don't want to lose resources to your operating system. If that is the case, then Lubuntu may be a very good operating system. For you. Another one that a lot of people don't think about, if you are running this on a laptop and battery power is important, the less CPU use, uh, the, um, the longer your battery is going to work, just because you know throttling that CPU uh, that uses power well if you've got a lightweight distribution you know you're going you're going to throttle that uh, that CPU less uh, granted it's not as big of a deal as uh, dimming your your display your your display on on most laptops is the biggest uh, resource hog but you know it it, it all does add up so in keeping with the whole lightweight mantra, uh, you know, they've gone with a lot of lightweight applications as well as keeping the desktop interface light. Let me close up the uh, my web browser here, get that out of the way, and let's take a look at some of the stuff that we've got here. Um, for example, uh, looking at our at our internet application you know we have Firefox web browser that's pretty standard pigeon internet messenger you know that's pretty standard Syflead instead of oh say evolution or um, uh, Thunderbird now if you're not familiar with Syflead uh, it is the the uh, predecessor of uh, clause mail uh, I think more people use clause mail than Syflead I might be wrong on that, but uh, you know both are very lightweight uh, uh, mail clients. Personally, uh, I it, when it comes to the lightweight mail clients, I would go with Geary. Uh, but you know this is a nice lightweight email client. 
uh, if we go down to our office, we don't have a full office suite. We have Abby Word for our word processing, a document viewer, and GNumeric for spreadsheets. For the average person, you probably don't need a full office suite. And, and I can tell you, Abby Word, it is very lightweight on the resources. And actually, I've, I'm, uh, I will be doing a review on Abby Word because uh, they've they've updated recently to the 3.0 version. Very nice, lots of improvements, and um, uh, real nice uh, word processor. Uh, anyway, let's see. Moving down to our sound and video, audacious for for music, Brazero uh, for burning disc. I did add cheese um, and VLC just because of uh, working up these videos and then also a simple screen recorder I needed to add that for doing my videos now uh, I want to kind of get back to cheese I added that because by default they had GUVC view for webcam and I normally use that but I have found in every one of the 14.10 series that this application will not start um, and I, I was doing a little research the past couple of days and apparently there's a bug that's preventing it from work and and there is now a workaround uh, but personally I've just found it uh, just as easy to go ahead and add cheese and, and work with cheese because that 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 webcam viewer always seems to work now one place where the uh, the lightweight desktop I wouldn't say it causes you a problem but you've got to kind of learn your way around things and that is down here in preferences as far as your system settings most distributions these days you have a unified uh, system display or menu where you can go and access all of your system settings you don't have that here you know you've got you know you've got your additional drivers you got your Bluetooth manager customized look and feel the de so I mean you can access them all here from the preferences menu but you don't have you know like in GNOME and Unity you have that unified system settings um, I don't know if you want to call it display or or graphical menu whatever um, and access everything from there you've got to go to this menu and kind of find what it is that you're looking for. So it's not a big deal once you get used to it. Uh, it's definitely an old school kind of way of doing things, having, you know, working through the menus and that. Um, uh, but, you know, it, it isn't as quick and easy as on a lot of the, a lot of distributions. Speaking of which, while I'm on the subject of settings, one thing I did run into, and uh, and it's the same deal with older versions of Lubuntu, is that uh, as far as monitor, if you go to the monitor settings, okay, it, it detects that I've, I'm running two monitors and I can go and set the resolution and turn them on and off, but it does not allow me to go and set it up as one giant desktop you know you could only mirror the desktops from there so I downloaded a utility called uh, let me find it again this ARAND R here which allows me to set up the way that I want my uh, my monitors to show uh, and you know it works fine that way you know so it's not mirroring the displays it's uh, you know it's one long desktop um, but it is something that if you're running multiple monitors that, that you do need to be aware of. Anyway, getting back to uh, you know our, our preferences and all that kind of stuff. Um, let me go up here to system tools. I, I was happy to see that um, in addition to the Lubuntu Software Center, by the way, Lubuntu Software Center is much better than the Ubuntu Software Center. Uh, it doesn't bog down. It's much quicker, uh, much easier to work with. Um, so I mean that's nice. But by default, they do have um, 
Synaptic Package Manager, which I like for installing my packages, and then also GDebbie for installing uh, um, Debian packages. Both of the, those I typically install on all my Ubuntu-based distributions. It's nice to see that they've included them by default. Um, let's see what else we got here. Um, oh, and let's talk about the file manager. PCFM is the default file manager. Um, big fan of this file manager. Not only is it lightweight and easy to use, it's quick, it's snappy. Uh, also has one of my favorite features, which is uh, working in dual pane mode. And uh, it's you know it's so nice that you can just drag and drop and compare you know you can compare to um, you know one file folder to the next and so on that sort of thing um, but you still have all the basic functionality that you could ask for in a uh, in a file manager uh, so I really like uh, their choice on that one Uh, let's see, we already talked about Software Center. Software Updater, um, it basically, you know, if you look at it, uh, for the most part, it's the Ubuntu, Ubuntu Software Updater, so nothing special there. Um, and then let's see, we have a Task Manager, so you can look at your CPU usage and all that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, of course, then we got our terminals down there. Let me close that up there. Uh, and I think that about covers most of the uh, the applications that we've got here. Um, now up here in accessories, we do have our archive manager, character map, and they've got the file manager listed again, uh, the G calculator. Uh, our image viewer, LeafPad for our text editor. LeafPad is kind of lightweight and doesn't have a whole lot of features, but if you're just looking for a basic text editor, um, nice application. Uh, LX Terminal and then uh, XPad for doing notes. All right, um, as far as panels go on here, you, by default you have bottom panel. Um, over here you've got your your uh, desktops uh, this right here will let you uh, convert all your open windows to icons uh, quick launch for your web browsers and one for your file manager and then a volume controller right there and then just like if you've if you've worked in you know XFCE or Mate or the old GNOME 2 you can go and uh, and remove they just call it panel items here although when you open this up they call it applets here so what what the disparity is I'm not, I'm not sure but in either case they're talking about the same thing also got different settings for you know uh, do you want to move the panel to the top or left right all that kind of stuff uh, you can add other panels if you want to do that move them around that sort of thing a uh, pretty good variety of applets that you can add to the panel. Um, so, uh, you know, you can tweak and set this thing up pretty much the way that you want. Um, default file manager, default terminal, emulator, um, number of, uh, here you go, size when minimized right there. Um, minimize panel when not in use. So if you want to get it out of the way, you can do that. So, uh, you know, as far as features, you're not really lacking a whole lot by going with the lightweight desktop. Now, the uh, the default desktop look, it's pretty much what we've seen oh, for a long time in, uh, in Lubuntu. And now let me go and pull up here. Um, and, and here's kind of the one of the... I don't know if you want to call it an odd thing, but you've got you've got the open box configuration manager, and from here, you know you can make all kinds of tweaks to uh, to open box. Which open box, by the way, is what uh, Lubuntu uses for its uh, its window manager. 
um, whereas uh, you know there's mutter and clutter which are using some of the gnome distributions unity uses uh, comp is um, and there's others but uh, open box is what uh, what Lubuntu uses by default um, and it you know while you're while you're um, in the open box you can change your theme here and you can see there's there's a fair number uh, installed by default so if you want to change the look you know maybe you want to go to something dark like that go with a green kind of thing you know whatever it whatever works for you um, and then you can also install themes from there which um, good place to go is called gnome look you can find themes for um, you know all kinds of different desktop environments there but anyway uh, you can you can tweak your looks from there but then you can also go to customize look and feel and here you can go and tweak the themes again from there and I guess it's just kind of a holdover from, you know, one is the the uh, default look tweaker coming from uh, coming from the from the open box. And this is what comes with LXDE. Uh, why you've got to, I'm not exactly sure, but that's that's kind of my guess on the reasoning. But anyway, once you're in here, you know, you can go and change your look, change the colors, make a custom color scheme, uh, change your icons. Uh, you can also install more icons from here. Uh, pick a mouse cursor theme. Um, same thing, window borders, fonts again, and a few other tweaks. So all kinds of different ways that you can tweak the look here. Right click and go to desktop preferences. And uh, once again, you can go and pick the different wallpapers. Yeah, they've got they've got a few other ones uh, that are installed by default. You got a little previewer right there, so you can see what you'll something that works out for you. Nice looking one of a bug. <laughs> All right, it looks like a dragonfly. I guess it is. Anyway, you can show the desktop icons, or if you're like me, I prefer a clean desktop with nothing on it. Uh, but whatever works for you, you can do that. Well, that about finishes things up here. Uh, I am going to make a follow-up video to this to this video that will kind of show and display if I'm going to use a, uh, a Lubuntu for my desktop environment, how I set it up. Um, you know, and of course everybody's going to be a little bit different, but you know maybe it gives you some ideas on on how to set things up and. Uh, it might even give you ideas on what you don't want to do, um, <clears throat> but you know something that'll just kind of, you know, stimulate some ideas, that sort of thing. Um, so uh, when I get that finished, I will throw a link up on this uh, on this video so you can go right to that and check it out. Uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it was useful to you. Give it a big old thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, be sure to subscribe to my videos. Uh, or to my channel so that you can keep seeing these great videos you get a you know so you know when new stuff comes out that sort of thing um, and as always see you on the next video